Examples of false, contradictory, and even vanishing findings are legion. Let's look at each of these in turn. False, contradictory, and vanishing findings. In the early 1990s, a Danish biologist seemed to confirm Darwin's theory of sexual selection. He showed that the female birds he studied preferred to mate with males with far more symmetrical feathers. The idea here was that the animals unknowingly use symmetry of the mating partner as a proxy or an indicator of health or fitness, since genetic mutations that might affect the symmetry are often not beneficial. They're often harmful, in fact, to the health of the organism. Fluctuating asymmetry, as this theory became known, was all the rage. Several follow-up studies, in fact, immediately confirmed his results. But a decade later, the case had completely collapsed. The widely touted theory was false. Now, perhaps you might think of this as a kind of success story. After all, didn't science just correct itself here? If you look more closely, though, it's more disconcerting than simply the fact that a well-confirmed theory now appears to be well-disconfirmed. Australian biologist Lee Simmons was especially excited about this new theory, this fluctuating asymmetry, and he went looking to confirm it, but it turned out he couldn't. But the worst part, he reports, quote, was that when I submitted these results, I had difficulty getting them published. The journals only wanted confirming data. It was too exciting an idea to disprove, end quote. In other words, false findings in this case were not just a fluke, but were a result of the structure of our supposedly rigorous system of peer review. We have a system that prefers positive results. Things got so bad, in fact, that in 1959, it was shown that 97% of all studies in psychology proved their hypotheses. This is not a recipe for accurate science. Most recently, there's been a serious replication crisis in psychology. There are so many studies today that there aren't even enough researchers to go and try to replicate them. Many papers are never cited again at all. Beyond false results, there are also a number of contradictory results that have led people toward a kind of skepticism about science. In the East, for instance, studies unanimously confirmed the therapeutic efficacy of acupuncture, while in the West, only about half of them did. Hence, acupuncture is viewed as scientific and medical in the East, but not in the West. Somebody is way off here. Confirmation bias is the likely explanation. We typically find what we expect to find, even in science. When you consider the vast array of data that scientists work with today, it's easy to see that it may be interpreted in any number of ways so as to get the expected result. Ioannidis calls this significance chasing. Beyond false and contradictory results, there appear to be several well-documented cases of what we might call diminishing returns on our investigation of nature or vanishing results. Fluctuating asymmetry that we mentioned earlier is in fact a good example of this. The results of multiple studies really and truly did overwhelmingly confirm it, at least at first. Then with each passing year, the results came down. Two thirds of the studies then seemed to confer the effect. After that, a few years later, it was only about half of them. And a few more years passed, it was one third and so on. It is as though the more we looked for the effect in nature, the more it receded from us. If this were the only case, perhaps we could just blow it off, right? Every theory, as we've said, has anomalies. But this effect of diminishing returns on investigation has been documented by meta-analysis of several studies. Jonathan Schooler made his career with research from the late 1980s and a theory called verbal overshadowing, which claimed that when subjects are asked to describe a face, that they're actually less likely than a control group to remember that face again later. In other words, trying to verbalize affected one's memory. Schooler's research was published in good journals and it was widely cited. And yet by the mid 1990s, he had trouble replicating his own results. The effect was still there, but diminished by one third and then another one-third, and so on as the years pass by. It's another case of an effect gradually becoming weaker and weaker. Even more strange 
it wasn't just Schooler, but other researchers saw this same downward trend regarding verbal overshadowing. In addition to false, conflicting, and seemingly vanishing research findings, there is severe pressure on scientists for results. First of all, there are publish or perish career pressures in the university system. Scientists must not only publish, but they're expected to bring in large research grants. The research grants, in turn, bring a certain pressure, whether from the government, or from oil, or tobacco, or pharmaceutical companies, to get certain results, to not bite the hand that feeds them. In other words, to interpret whatever results come about in the most favorable light. This is not a conspiracy theory, but a documented fact. To take but one example, a recent article in the Journal of the American Medical Association recently revealed that in the 1960s, the sugar industry purposely funded a group of Harvard scientists to downplay the risks of sugar and to highlight the risks associated with fat intake. This is hardly a merely academic problem. It has actually killed people for my entire lifetime. The governmental scientific industrial complex has insisted that fat lies behind our heart disease epidemic. So much so that we all began to go to the grocery and buy low fat products that all turned out to be loaded with sugar. This severe pressure also leads, in some cases, to outright fraud. For instance, Dr. Andrew Wakefield published a fraudulent study in 1998 in the world's most prestigious medical journal, The Lancet, finding a significant link between autism and the common MMR vaccine for measles, mumps, and rubella. What should be disconcerting here is not merely the fraud that took years to uncover and retract, but that while Wakefield's name is still well known among many today, no one remembers who debunked his study. This only serves to show that there is a name to be made with flashy results, but not with falsifying them. Even worse, ordinary people who became convinced of this autism vaccine link, in large part because of this journal article in the world's best medical journal, were immediately castigated as morons. Even though they were just trying to follow the science, the science changed on them, and those who didn't reverse their thinking fast enough were labeled as little better than Holocaust deniers. Ooh.